Michigan absolutely dominated Minnesota last night, and I have got your overreaction Sunday. But before I get into my five, six, seven overreactions from last night's game, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. It's youtube.com slash Michigan TV, and we are just a few subscribers, 58, I guess it's more than a few, but less than 100 away from hitting our next 1,000 milestone, 28,000 subscribers, so hit that subscribe button if you have yet to do so. We stay up late last night, and we are back here in the office making new videos then, making new videos now, so it's free. Hit that subscribe button, the Michigan Football Report by Chat Sports. We are going to take a look at all the things that you – the fans, the audience, the uh, Michigan football community, the media, the greater college football landscape is overreacting to, and I'll give you my takes on them after last night's dominant 52-10 to road victory at Minnesota. All that coming up in the Michigan Football Report right now. Michigan football overreaction Sunday is presented by Manscaped. Use promo code GOBLUE, no spaces, 20% off, and free shipping. I just got myself the handyman. Coming up that face, I absolutely love it. 20% off and free shipping. Here's the question to start this overreaction Sunday. As the AP poll, the coaches poll, will come out in the next couple hours here. And I want to get your take before that happens. You might be watching this after the polls come out, so you might already know what the results are. But with Texas losing yesterday, with Georgia looking good, but not nearly as dominant the entire season, is Michigan the best team in college football right now? Go down in the comments. I'll pin this comment right below the video, the top comment. So just go reply to that. Give me a Y for yes, N for no. I think absolutely they should be number one in the country. I don't think they will, but I think they're going to make it closer and closer with Georgia as time goes on. First overreaction I saw yesterday was in relation to that question is there is a growing consensus among Michigan fans, among Big Ten fans, among national media, bloggers, pundits, YouTubers, that Michigan is the best team in college football. A 52 to 10 absolute domination last night of Minnesota. Back to back dominations on the road against Nebraska, against Minnesota. I mean, those two teams were like. Uh, I don't know, in a, uh, uh, a fight with uh, limp towels or something like that in the first week of college football. It was a 13 to 10 kind of game. Looks like neither team had any firepower, but they played a little bit better since then. You know, Nebraska played okay yesterday. Minnesota, all right, this is not a Minnesota team that you expect to be being beat at home by Michigan 52 to 10. So those two teams that played the first week of the season, both kind of look bad, have steadily got better. They meet Michigan. They are absolutely dominated, and I think this is going to continue for weeks and weeks going forward. Michigan doesn't have what I think will be a competitive game until going on the road against Penn State on um, November 11th, right? Two weeks after that, they've got to Ohio State. Maryland smack dab in the middle. you got Purdue prior to that. you got Indiana coming up next week, Michigan State. So halfway through the season, Michigan, I think, has looked the most dominant by far in all of college football. Gave up that touchdown to end the first half. Broke that streak. Could have set the all-time modern record of six straight games to start a season, scoring 30-plus and holding your opponents to seven or less. Overreaction number two. I actually think this might be my overreaction, but I still want to bring it to you, is that Michigan needs to start thinking about J.J. McCarthy as their Heisman hopeful. They've done a really good job the last couple of years. Even going back to 2016, Jabril Peppers, getting him an invite to New York. Um, uh, you've got Aiden Hutchinson in 2021. Blake Horn would have been there in 2022. Michigan promotes him, gets those extra touchdowns. Kind of did that yesterday with J.J., right? 14 of 20, so not throwing the ball around the field, but 219 yards, okay. One touchdown passing, but those two touchdowns on the ground really give J.J. McCarthy's stats a little boost, a three-touchdown day. Still throwing at 70% uh, in this game. He's leading the country college football in completion percentage. He's leading uh, college football in QBR, quarterback rating. Throwing the ball around his wide receivers yesterday. Not a, you know, a, an air raid type of game by any means. Cornelius Johnson had his three catches for 86 yards. He had a really nice long catch adjusted to a ball that maybe was uh, you know, thrown off by a half yard or so. He made the adjustment in the air. Roman Wilson with three catches. The Don comes back with four catches and only 25 yards. Um, still another kind of concerning game with Diamond Edwards, only 45 total yards. No touchdowns to those guys. Colson Loveland did get into the end zone for the first time this season. So I'll ask you guys this question. After six games, the midway point of this 2023 Michigan football season, the question, will J.J. McCarthy be a Heisman finalist? Just let me know in the comments. 
for this question. Yes or no? Let me know what you guys are thinking. I think yes at this point. You're going to be the undisputed leader and best player on what should be a undefeated national championship level team. That spells Heisman finalist to me. I want to know what you guys think. Give me a yes or a no. As I told you at the top of the show, the Michigan Football Report is presented by Manscaped, who is taking a step up from Balloween to bring your face the cleanest shave it's ever seen. So this season, no need to toil and trouble. Manscaped's all-new handyman is the best way to get rid of that stubble. Featuring a compact design and next-gen skin-safe technology, the handyman was designed to give you that smooth finish without the mess of a traditional shave. Guys, you just get in the shower, you're out of the shower, it can be wet, it can be dry. This thing is amazing. Might be Manscaped's best product of all time. They are treating the beard game as their next generation of products. And if you're tired of a bad razor making your neck look like a scary movie, the Handyman Skin Safe technology will help you reduce nicks and cuts, and you can finally feel confident when going for that close shave. As I mentioned, wet or dry use, Feel free to bring the handyman anywhere. Compact design and airplane friendliness make this the perfect travel tool on the go. And being able to shave up to three days growth without the mess of a wet shave is priceless. Go to manscaped.com, get the handyman, get 20% off and free shipping. Just type in that promo code GOBLUE, G-O-B-L-U-E, when you check out at manscaped.com. 20% off and free shipping. Link is down in the comments and the description of today's Michigan football report. Next up, overreaction is the offensive line is set. That's what you guys are saying out there in the, in the internet. That's what I honestly listen to some of the Michigan post-game player interviews. It seems like the players think that this uh, offensive line is set. The same offensive line that went in and dominated against, uh, against Nebraska dominates one more week. you got Ladarius Henderson in there at left tackle. You're moving uh, Carson Barnett over to right tackle. The middle three guys, Trevor Keegan, uh, Zach Sinter, etc., they stay the same. The odd man out, of course, is Miles Hinton starting right tackle the first four games of the year. He injured, I think he's lost his spot to injury. Now, it didn't really show up in the stats from the running game. Um, it's kind of funny, Jack. I don't know if you noticed, but like Blake Corum has something like 47 or 51 carries. So it was a small number. I'll want to talk about this more when we look on Monday or Tuesday at the midseason comparisons compared to last year. But Corum was breaking off 27 carries, 33 carries in the first few games of last season, like these fourth, fifth, sixth games. Only uh, mid 40s, late 40s amount of carries this entire season so far. He had nine for 69 yesterday. Got in the end zone again, so he will remain the NCAA leader in rushing touchdowns. Kalel Mullings, he is starting to me to look like. Uh, young Hassan Haskins, and then the Don, only four carries for the Don, 20 yards on the day. Before we take a look at the rest of the overreactions, I want to add some more players to Yoder's Michigan football dogs. These guys get their collar after yesterday's performance. So Jack, I don't know if you saw this, Jim Harbaugh stealing it. He called J.G. McCarthy a dog, and he said, dog. Determined athlete with grit. He, had, he, created an, he created an acronym. He wants to watch the show again, as he used to all the time. Um, I haven't heard him make any Yoder-style references. He said, dog, D-A-W-G. He says, J.J. McCarthy, he's a dog. D-A-W-G, determined athlete with grit. J.J. McCarthy's been a dog since the first week of the year. But Will Johnson, pick six, second play of the game. Will Johnson, you are a dog for this Michigan football team. You get your collar. A guy who's not necessarily a starter, but getting starter snaps, Josiah Stewart. Seemed like he was everywhere yesterday. Josiah Stewart, take your collar, young man. You are a dog. Maybe the MVP of yesterday's game for Michigan. He was playing with a big old club on his hand. His fingers are just completely covered up. Looked like he was a caveman out there all over the place. Mason Graham, what do you have, six tackles in the day? Six tackles, a sack, dog. And then... The last man, I was waiting to see if he had a big game, like six, seven catches, or finally got in the end zone, and that is Michigan's starting tight end, Colson Loveland. In a play reminiscent of the Ohio State touchdown in the third quarter, J.J. McCarthy stepped up in the pocket, got hit, delivered the ball down the right sideline. Colson Loveland earns his collar. He's a dog. And those are the men who have been added to Yoder's Michigan football dogs. Talk about Mason Graham there. Six tackles on the night. Five solo, missed last week's game, two tackles for loss, one sack. I told you earlier in the week, I didn't think he would play, not because you know I said he was able to play, but whether they would play him, did they need him? Well, 
didn't necessarily need him, but he certainly made an impact in this game. Everyone was talking about him after the game. Mason Graham, you've earned your collar. And uh, he could be, people are saying, Jack, um, that Mason Graham could be, when all things are said and done, the best, maybe the best uh, defensive line, maybe interior defensive line in the history of this program. Speaking of this program, speaking of this team, do they have any flaws? Right before we filmed this on Sunday morning, I tweeted out, I said, and this wasn't hyperbole, this isn't me talking crazy or being some wild, crazy Michigan fan. I said, Michigan's second string defense, the backups, if they played when went and played for another team or just played every game for Michigan, that's a top 15 defense in all of college football. P.J. Fleck thinks this Michigan team altogether has some major uh, talent. Here's what he said at his press conference last night. I think they're the best football team I've seen in my 11 years as being a head coach. That includes a lot of teams going back to when he was at Western Michigan. They had themselves ahead of a run. This team has dominated through six games. I've never, I don't know if I've ever seen a Michigan team halfway through the season. Hey, you know, other than J.J. McCarthy's three interceptions against Bowling Green, this team has done almost nothing wrong this entire season. 30-3, to 35-7. to I mean, uh, in a different world, maybe those games are 49-7 to instead of 35-7, but whatever. Bowling Green 31-6, Rutgers 31-7, and you go on the road for your fifth and sixth game, and you dominate to an even higher level, level 45-7, to and then 52-10. to Tackle leaders versus Minnesota. One more time here. Mason Graham is coming in with six tackles. Ernest Hausman, right? Both these players should be back. We'll be back from Michigan next year. They're both true sophomores. Graham and Hausman, good to see. And it's funny. You got Ernest Hausman there, transfer. Cam Good, didn't really hear much from him last year after transferring from Central Florida. He has in the game a ton yesterday. Four tackles on the night. Transfer. Three of the four guys are there, guys. Transfer portal players, Josiah Stewart, all over the field yesterday, making a lot of game-impacting plays with three tackles on the day. He had five more guys with three tackles. Sophomore Derek Moore. Just think about the players we just showed you right here. Almost all these guys on defense will be back next season, I believe. Michael Barry, I don't believe will be because, of course, he's a six-year player, so he won't be. Uh, Junior Colson, right, third-year player. I think he'll come back, although if he gets a second – Ground grade, maybe he goes. Jalen Harrell, he'll be back, I believe, unless he decides he wants to go pro. Uh, Cameron Brandt, don't expect from much him uh, long term, but he got in there late in the second half for this team. Derek Moore, Michael Barrett, Junior Colson, Jalen Harrell, Cameron Brandt, all kind of rounding up the tackle leaders for Michigan with three against Minnesota. How does defense do defending the pass? Okay, five of 15. Five of 15. These are scholarship players, right? This isn't, uh, this isn't a rec team league. 5 of 15 for, uh, I'm not even going to pronounce his name, but Ethan. I think you feel like you're missing a letter there. It should be like Nathan or something like that, but whatever. Uh, he's clearly Greek with that last name. 5 of 15, 52 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. So Michigan gave up 52 yards to Minnesota through the air. 35 of that, Jack, came on the last play of the half for Minnesota on that touchdown. So without that bomb, 17 yards passing, but Michigan themselves caught two of those passes, two of those 15 passes, and took him back for two touchdowns, 64 yards. So Michigan's defense, 64 yards receiving on Minnesota's quarterback. The Minnesota receivers, only 52 yards receiving. That's the level of dominance yesterday that we saw from this defense in the secondary in particular. I'll ask you guys this question, six games through the year. Who is Michigan's mid-season MVP so far? If you think it's J.J. McCarthy, give me a one down in the comments. Roman Wilson didn't score a touchdown yesterday, surprising everybody. Give me a two Mikey Sainer still probably the defensive MVP so far. Give me a three. And Keon Saab, right? Um, not necessarily even supposed to be a starter coming into the season. Has filled in admirably. I think he's earned the right to be called a starter no matter what happens to Rod Moore or anybody else this season. Pick six in the second half yesterday uh, towards the end of the third quarter. Give me a four if it's Keon Saab. And number five overreaction. And maybe these are just all mine. I don't know. Some of these are just mine. Some of these are you guys. But I saw a ton of this. The, I put out on Twitter – and we read on halftime. I said, Ohio State fans, I've got a few Ohio State fan followers on Twitter. I said, give me your take on this Michigan football team after watching the last two weeks. Right, Ohio State was on bye last week. They played early this week, so a night game, no conflicts with Michigan. So I assume that a lot of Ohio State fans would have tuned in the week. And basically the consensus was this is the one of the best two teams in the country, maybe the best team in the country, and they had to swallow, you know, kind of just you know, bite, bite down on something hard to actually say that and tweet it out. But I think the general consensus, even among rival fans, is this Michigan team is one of the two best teams in the country. Take a look at the dominance yesterday. Look at this. 52 points to 10. We know that. 169 is all the yardage you gave up yesterday against Minnesota. 241 yards passing for Michigan. Uh, of course, majority of that, 219, was J.J. McCarthy. And then uh, Jack Tuttle came in. How about Jack Tuttle on that last touchdown? Third and 
think it was 18 or 19. He scrambles, gets down to the one-yard line. I think it was third and 18. He gets 19 yards. Michigan runs to 191, gives up 117 against Minnesota. No turnovers and only one penalty. Last three games, this Michigan football team has had four penalties, right? Uh, three against Rutgers, zero against Nebraska, which was the first time that happened in over four years for Michigan football team, and only one that was counted yesterday. I think they were called for two. One was uh, was you know, declined. So one penalty yesterday. So four penalties in the last three games. I mean, that's just absurd. That just shows the discipline and the – Teamwork and the expectations that this program is playing with right now. Houston or bust is what I'm saying here on this overreaction Sunday. I agree with it. College football semifinals are in New Orleans, in Pasadena at the Rose Bowl. Michigan should play in one of those, I believe, and then win one for the first time in this college football playoff era before it moves to the 12-team playoff next year. I will have a mid-season overview, talk some injuries and more Michigan football rumors. we got a video every single day this week, so make sure you subscribe. So I'll see you guys then. Go Blue. Thank <laughs> you.